Greetings, Acolyte, and welcome back to the Ordo Grigio, the Emperor's secret society against the enemy that is unpainted models. Today we're going to paint 20 conscripts for the Imperial Guard in less than an hour. So we've done a fair amount of single models recently, but at the core of 40k is armies. Lots of armies. And armies need soldiers, possibly none more than the Astra Militarum. So to bulk up my Imperial Guard forces, I'm painting up a unit of 20 conscripts for use in the city fight missions. Now with large units, it's fairly impractical to paint them to the same standard as hero units or display models, though that would look very impressive. These models will be the armed workers of the Manufactorums, and as such, are pretty disposable and liable to run from a fight any time they take some serious hits. So display level quality job seems a bit... much. Initially, I thought I'd come up with a cool new technique that used science to trick your eyes into thinking there was a lot more detail on the models than there actually was, by applying highlight style layers of colour over the black prime, which is the footage you've been seeing so far in the video. I even did a few test models to see how it looked, and they were pretty good for what went into them. However, painting an entire unit fast is quite a different experience than painting up a single model to a high standard, and you can't really just wing it. Which, if you've been around for a while, you've probably surmised winging it is kind of my thing. Producing batches of painted models, much like manufacturing in batches, requires a process, and most importantly, a plan. After realising the mistake that the first layer of green was taking more than 5 minutes a model to apply, I realised that I needed to rethink my approach, and maybe even my colour scheme. So it would all come together in an Emperor approved harmony that would culminate in a solid soldier per hour rate that even the administratum would be proud of. So I switched techniques from highlights to dry brushing, and dropped the army green from my scheme to simplify it just a little bit. After all, the aim here is a three colour tabletop standard, not armies on parade. So with these colours in hand and the models reprimed, it was time to get to work and start the timer. Step 1. The entire model, except the boots, gets the nastiest, hashiest, roughest dry brush of leather brown that I've ever done. I'm using the strengths of the model here, and I'm aware this isn't necessarily an easily transferable speed painting technique like slap chop or whichever new craze the internet's obsessed with. But I wanted something easily replicable, quick and not relying on fancy products or fads because sometimes you just want to crank out a bunch of guardsmen, sure in the knowledge they'll be crumped real good real soon anyway. Plus, if you're a painting for play type rather than a painting for pleasure type, who were, then let's face it, as long as the model doesn't look terrible, it'll do. I chose dry brushing as the basis for attempt 2, as the layering highlighting took a lot of time and care per model, whereas dry brushes uses the texture of the model to bring out the detail, and if we do this quicker, messier step first, then we don't really have to care about avoiding areas, we can just smash on the paint and move on. For those that are maybe newer to painting or never heard of dry brushing before, Essentially, like I'm repeatedly doing here, you take a soft bristled brush, cheap Amazon makeup brushes for example, dip it in the paint, then work the paint into the bristles and rub it until the majority of the paint has left the brush and it's well, sort of dry. Wow. Then moving back and forth motions across the model so the paint is deposited on the raised surfaces but shadow remains in the recesses. It's a bit messy, but it's much faster than applying a base layer and a wash, and it's about 70 to 80% as good, so for speed painting guys in a big long leather trench coat, the Emperor approves. Using this technique, I was able to get an initial colour and shade onto all 20 models in less than 17 minutes, so less than a minute per model, much faster than my previous attempt, which was closer to 5 minutes per model for the same stage. Obviously, we're not done yet though, though it would be amazing if we could get models battle ready less than a minute each, but it's time to thoroughly wash our brush, dry brushing is very harsh on brushes, 
And yes, brush washing time is included in the time for painting these guys, because that's part of painting. Step 2. I stick some uniform grey on my palette and it's time for the next step, which is adding an accent colour. Now this could be any colour you want, but I went with a grey to stay within the utilitarian, military, industrial feel of the models, and I use this colour to pick out the aquila and the respirator hose. Though it's a fairly rough and ready application, essentially the aquila is a V on the head and the hose gets rubbed from the top where light would hit it, and the rest can stay black or brown, depending if the dry brush hit it or not. Also ignore the fact my camera crashed for a while and needed reset, it doesn't seem to like recording for long stretches, and it does happen again later on. The purpose of the accent colour, as well as helping us meet the three colour minimum requirement, is to add some visual interest to the model. So whilst I've gone for a neutral grey to stay within the realms of realism and military apparel, you could easily pick out banding or some other feature in a brighter colour, just be sure it's on an area big enough to catch the eye, but also small enough it's not going to take 6 years to paint. Painting this way is a great way to practice and improve your brush control as well, as that's basically the main crux of this step. If you don't make mistakes in the first place, you don't have to spend time fixing them. Though I'm hardly a master, as you may have seen the mistakes I made painting the Aquilas, luckily I caught them quick enough and was able to just wipe away the excess paint before it had dried. Now whilst this does cover a relatively small area on the model, it can take up some time, but we have our base and our accent colour done before the 27 minute mark. Awesome. Step 3. After another brush wash, gunmetal goes onto the palette so we can get the metallics done. This is on the shoulder pads, helmet and the rifle. Like the grey accent colour, this will be a fairly messy but controlled layer onto the model leaving some of the brown and black in the recesses. By leaving these colours in the metallics, it not only gives them some shading and non-reflective areas, but the brown in there will also help give them an aged and worn appearance without introducing washes or pigments which require extra steps, drying time, or further investment. I think including a metallic colour into a limited palette like this is important because it's <laughs> essentially cheating. As a metallic paint will reflect the light naturally, because you know, it's metallic, this means that even with a flat or hashy application like we have here, the light reflecting off it will highlight it in real time and at arm's length on a tabletop. It really helps the model shine. Yes, that was a pun. Dad jokes are emperor approved forms of humour. Now while the application of the metallic was fairly haphazard and deliberately left gaps and recesses for some quick and easy shading, I did want to make sure that the peak on each of the soldier's helmet had a good coat of the paint. This would help it catch the light and further reinforce the contrast between the hard edges and the recesses making it look like I spent a lot more time on these models than the three minutes a model it actually took me. It's also probably worth mentioning at this point that whilst some speed paint techniques are timed in brush time and totally ignore drying time, speed paints and contrast paints can take quite a while to dry, I specifically chose to stick with acrylics and time the process start to finish to see how long it would really take to get from primed to painted in a sort of real world sense. And whilst this approach would never yield amazing mind blowing models in just 20 minutes or any other clickbaity combinations of words, it would be an accurate and honest representation of a way you could paint to get models battle ready fast, albeit with some management of expectations. Another time saving I employed was only painting the upper and front facing parts of the rifle leaving the underside and inside in shadow. Realistically, there wouldn't be much light hitting these areas, so they wouldn't be bright like the areas I painted. So I painted the metallics with the attitude of, if it's hard to get my brush in, then it's hard for light to get in, so let's not paint it. This also had the added benefit of not painting risky areas, reducing the chance of making a mistake that would require clean up meaning that we had three full colours applied to the model in just under 47 minutes. And technically four, if we count the fact that the boots are still black. 
If we're going for bare minimum, we can call it here and say we average just over two and a half minutes a model, which is pretty good. However, I want them to fit in with my other Imperial Guard for the campaign I'm running, so I 3D printed them some bases and I'm going to apply Desert Brown to them. Step 3.5, open bracket, optional, close bracket. I lost a bit of time here as I switched to a different brush for dry brushing the bases. I used a stiffer brush, though this was horrible and scratchy and streaky, so I tried the original brush I used from the brown, where I found moisture hidden in the bristles, making the paint super thin. I was a little frustrated. So I rummaged in the bag of brushes underneath my desk, a totally sensible storage solution, and found another makeup brush small enough for minis. Once happy with how the paint was going onto the base, I continued, and the camera crashed again. Obviously it has a jealous machine spirit, because I hadn't looked at the preview on my monitor while searching through my brushes, or for like the next 5 minutes. Traditionally a yellow, or just lighter colours in general, tend to have a pretty poor coverage over black, and as you can see that's pretty accurate here too. However, I'd aimed off for this and thought that the variation in how the paint went on and covered would make it look a bit more natural in the end result. As I mentioned before, dry brushing is quite a messy technique and it can be hard to avoid hitting areas we don't want to, which is why we did our initial dry brush first. However, the main area at risk here is the boots, which have remained black so far, so any overspill onto them will just help tie the model in with its environment and we can palm it off as weathering. Though if it is too harsh like some areas were, we can just wipe it off with our finger before it dries. All in all, at just over the 59 minute mark, it's fair to say, they're done. I think, for the time invested in them, they look really good, and I did have a bit of fun placing them in ruins to fight my traitor guard. Though I should probably add on that, after recording this, I spent another 7 minutes tidying up the rims with matte black, so I guess it's more like an hour and 6 minutes for the whole lot. Still, it's a great, simple way, using not a lot to get your models ready for the tabletop, and hopefully it can help a few people out there get through their pile of shame like I've now realising I have no excuse not to do. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comment section below and I'll see you all next time.